So you're rolling out a whole bunch of devices. We want to help you as much as we can. On this module, we're going to talk through a bit of the things we find useful in empowering your users to get the most out of their Surface. Things like battery life, all these different reports. It's really important that they are set up for success from day one. Yeah, we want to give you those answers before your end users come to you with the questions ahead of time. So you're really well equipped and prepared. Yeah. You've got enough on your plate deploying new devices. So we want to help you <laughs> out as much as Very possible. Very aware, yes. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about battery life. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we, want, we all want to get the most out of our devices throughout our workday, whether we're on the go, whether we're just sitting at our office all day. It's important that you know we're ensuring the health of our battery on these devices for the long run. Yeah. So the first piece of advice that we can give is specifically uh, to enable hibernation on your system image. Uh, if, especially if you have a lot of mobile employees and they're using these devices on the go, they may need to pick up where they left off very quickly. And so hibernate allows them to save pretty well all the power on that device while it's in their bag, while they're in a meeting, for example, and they'll still you know, be ready to go yeah. when they jump back out. And to be clear, hibernation, it is turned off by default because it's now a part of the standard process with the sleep cycle. Uh, like a human's, it has a REM cycle and then kind of a deep sleep. And so it begins in connected standby and then will translate into pure hibernation. Uh, however, if you have some policies that maybe conflict, some programs that might prevent it from going into hibernation, that can sometimes affect their battery life while in the bag or seemingly unused. Uh, the battery could still drain in those circumstances. So by enabling that option, if a user is having a particular challenge, they can for sure know that everything has been committed to RAM. The computer is using little to no power in that deep hibernation mode uh, almost immediately. Again, this is sort of a measure for extenuating circumstances, but can still help prolong the battery life. Another one of the main points regarding battery life is your screen brightness. Uh, oftentimes we have this perception that uh, the most important thing for battery is how many programs are you running, how fast is the processor burning. And while that does matter, it's nowhere near the power consumption of the massive light panel <laughs> built into your device. So by lowering that screen brightness just a couple steps or allowing Windows to control that with the suggested setting, you're able to get much longer battery life. But what's important for users to understand is that when they change that brightness setting, it's going to stay there until they put it back to suggested. So if they, for one day, decide, I want maximum screen brightness, uh, then that is going to kind of remain there until they turn it back down. So important things we want to make sure that they're aware of so they're getting the most out of it. We do have a feature called Connected Standby on Windows, and it works really great on Surface. It allows the device to stay connected while it's in sleep mode, uh, so that way when you, the user opens it up, it's already pre-connected. But if you find that that's draining the battery life more than you would like it, or you, you may get a comment from an end user about that, uh, there is a policy to disable that Connected Standby mode. That's going to just help conserve battery life while the device is uh, shut off, whether it's currently in sleep or hibernate, so that uh, you, know, you can really maximize the battery life throughout the day. And as you're servicing these devices and you've got users remote that are having maybe an issue, whether it's with an app or with their device, you need to be able to remote in really easily and uh, service that device. Now, we've, we all know classic remote desktop on Windows. It's been there for a while. But we do have a new universal Windows application in the Windows Store. It is free to download. And it does a lot better in Windows 10 with scaling. That's a big part, and we understand that that is kind of a, a source of contention with the older application. Using these new modern devices with these 4K pixel density screens, uh, we needed a modern solution to do it. Your first reaction might hear, oh my gosh, a modern app for something that's just so integral to the system. Is it actually able to do it as well as the previous one? It uses a lot of the same exact login credentials, and it has even more functionality than the classic remote desktop client that is built into Windows. So this does need to be added through the Windows Store, the Microsoft Store, uh, as an extra app. That can be sideloaded if you don't permit access to the Microsoft Store. It's something, though, that we highly recommend that you add, at least on your devices as members of IT, uh, but even allowing your users to access this if there's business cases in your organization, uh, the new remote desktop app is brilliant. 
How you download it, just simply look up Remote Desktop on the Microsoft Store. You might see two listings. One is Remote Desktop Preview, and that is for us testing some of the new features. So if you ever want to be a little bit ahead of the curve, you can download that version. Uh, but of course, the standard Remote Desktop app is more often than not the way to go. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of applications that uh, are sometimes already installed and sometimes yes. we go out and install them ourselves, the Tips application is a particularly useful app uh, to provide for your end users. But there's also some good tidbits in there for IT pros as well. Uh, so this is an app that is installed on Windows by default. Uh, you can find it in your start menu, of course. And it's going to give you helpful tips and tricks, on-screen walkthroughs. And it's, what's really great about this app is that it's not just aware of the version of Windows you're on. It's also aware of the device that you're using as well. If I had one sentence to <laughs> tell a user, hey, how do I use my new Windows 10 machine, it would be, open the Tips app. Because uh, it does take you step by step, even from what is the start menu to tips that are unique for you as IT members. Uh, so we highly and strongly recommend that you do not remove the Tips app as a part of your system image. And if it's currently being removed, it's worth considering to add back. Because it's a great tool for you to be able to go to a user and say, why don't you take a look through the Tips app? You could probably use it. <laughs> and it gives you a way to help them uh, be successful. Awesome. Uh, another thing that we we hear sometimes when uh, somebody gets a new Surface, because of these high pixel density displays, they're gorgeous, very bright, uh, and v super crisp. But at times, the elements, whether they're UI elements like the uh, you know close and minimize buttons or whether it's font, can sometimes be different sizes than what we expect them to be. And if you're having a hard time reading it, instead of changing resolution, it's important to encourage your end users to change the scaling settings first. We've done a lot of work with the scaling settings, to be very clear, uh, from Windows 7 to Windows 8 even. Windows 8 kind of pushed things forward with regards to adaptive scaling. Windows 10 uh, almost perfects it. Uh, because Windows 10, the second that you take something on a screen that's set to, let's say, 200% of size, which is the default for your Surface screen, and move that over to a regular HD monitor that is 100% of size, that app, the second your mouse crosses the threshold, boom, it resizes and is the appropriate view for whichever screen. Here's the important distinction. Not all apps do this. We, Microsoft, can control apps that uh, adjust their size based on percentage of window size. Uh, but if that app is written to take up a certain amount of pixels, it might either appear giant or tiny, depending on which screen you're using. And sadly, that is part of transitioning to a new format of 4K style screens. We encountered similar problems with Windows XP moving to high definition in the first place. So it's one of those things that regardless if it's a Surface or any other device that we're currently facing as an industry, but Windows 10 does a really good job of making sure your apps look as best as possible on each different monitor. And we're also adding improvements to Windows 10 along the way and updates to make that even more seamless. Yeah, and uh, on that note specifically, you may find if you open a Windows 32 application, if it does appear a little blurry at times, uh, you'll probably get a notification asking you if the application is blurry. And if so, we'd love if you could report that to us. It helps us uh, work with the software vendors to be able to uh, correct them so that they work best on Windows. So this is just the beginning of the long list of things that we're focusing on at Microsoft to empower users to work more effectively. Uh, these are things that you as an IT team can either add to your image or set as a policy to help extend battery life, make the device run better, uh, and also just make them more aware of how to best use their machine.